Okay, well, I kind of stumbled into art. I never planned on uh, art as a living. Actually, never even really considered it um, as a something I would pursue until, well, I'll go back a little bit farther. I was I was a major in natural resources. I was working on a uh, degree in um, outdoor recreation. I was going to be a park ranger, interpretation. And I happened to buy a camera after my freshman year, and I wanted to learn how to use it a little better. I took a class and took another photo class and ended up taking some foundation design class. And before you knew it, I had a, MA, or a BFA in um, art with an emphasis in photography. So I, yeah, I never thought that I would end up doing this thing. Um, I just fell into it and fell in love with it. So I, I've been working at Minnesota State University for, this is my 24th year. Before that I taught at Florida Keys Community College. Um, and those opportunities, I, I kind of fell into those also. Um, the opportunity to teach down in Florida Keys came about by accident. I had contacted the um, chair of the department down there and I had a, f a free ticket, and I was going to go to Chicago to SPE conference and be one of hundreds of people trying for uh, one or two jobs. And um, I had contacted the chair and said, hey, do you have anything going on down there? He said, no, but not much. We have a part-time person. We're interested in maybe doing some more. And so I took my chance and went down there and uh, Loved it down there. It was a beautiful place, beautiful people, um, but it just wasn't paying very well. <laughs> so after three years, I had the opportunity to go teach up at Minnesota State University Moorhead, which at the time was Moorhead State University, and um, I took advantage of it. I started up a uh, program art. Well, they had a degree in art with an emphasis in photography, but they didn't really have much going on. It was more of a service area of photography to the other um, programs, and I built that up into the second biggest program in the department after graphic design. Um, and I've had some great students up there over the years. I really do enjoy teaching. Um, it's been a big part of my life and it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's winding down, but I'm getting closer to retirement and uh, it's exciting for me to think about maybe investing a little more time in my own work. And I'm on sabbatical right now, so um, that's a, a great opportunity and I'm glad I could be here during the sabbatical. Yeah, with this project, it all kind of came about. I was visiting New York City, um, and I saw the work of John Fall. He had this project I hadn't seen prior to this, um, which was quite a bit different than his previous work. And it, um, uh, it revolved around garden images, and they were sort of surrealistic looking images. And I thought, how did he do that? And after contemplating it for a while, I realized that it was really a, a pretty simple manipulation in Photoshop. And um, so he got the idea, you know, he was taking these beautiful gardens and making them look even a little bit more surreal. And I thought, well, why don't I take these sort of ugly places? Because these are all gravel pits, quarries that most people would look at them and think, this is just an eyesore. And so I was much more intrigued to take this eyesore and make it look somewhat surreal. And so that's what 
started the project. Um, the interesting thing about this project is that most of these are within five miles of my home in Minnesota. Um, and if you're looking at them, they, they look like they could be, in some cases, on the moon almost. Um, but it, it's, that's one of the things that's really intrigued me over the years, and I've been working on this project since close to 2010. Um, I can go to a handful of quarries, and every time I go to these different places, because of the nature of the movement of land, um, they always look different. And so um, if I time myself right and get some good light, it, it looks like these could be in 30 different places also. So it's, it's a fun project and it's something that was fairly easy to do because of location. A lot of times my work takes me to um, places that are beyond where I live. Um, and so it's been a, a fun thing to be able to go back to easily over the years. I, it's the, it starts out as a horizontal image. Uh, well, these are a little bit different here, mm -hmm. but all the vertical images all start out as a horizontal image, um, somewhat normal looking landscape, and then Digitally, I manipulate things and just squeeze all that digital information in like so. Um, with these images, I'm doing the opposite. I'm, I'm still taking a horizontal image, but I'm expanding it out. Um, so if you've ever um, taken a photo class and you think in terms of zone system, mm -hmm. we do compactions and expansions. I kind of like to kind of compare this work to, to that. Um, so it's, it's really simple, mm -hmm. it's a slight manipulation. I'm not really big on manip or using Photoshop to change images a lot. Mm -hmm. And really there's just one thing whenever I'm changing image size that I do um, that allows me to sort of distort that image don't like to say too much about the specific thing because I like to leave that up to the person looking at it to try to figure out. Yeah, but it is very simple. <laughs> Whenever I'm uh, photographing, I try to minimize the um, man-made objects in them. And at times, like that one image had a crane in it. And I just digitally take, took that crane out. Um, because if you see man-made objects in these images, they look really distorted. And that gives you a hint at that manipulation. But if you don't see that, those objects like that, mm -hmm. I think you, you, you're left to kind of try to figure out are these real places or what's been done? And so I, I try with most of these, you won't see much of any impact of man, um, just specifically because it sort of gives things away. You will notice in some of the images some like tire tracks, and that's hard to avoid all the time without getting really crazy with manipulating things digitally. Um, this image here, uh, you will see some of those marks. Um, but so this was my very first image that I did with this process. And I chose this one in particular. I, so I hadn't tried that manipulation of squeezing things in, um, but I, I knew that I would have to come up with strong foregrounds usually in the images and I want it to really play with depth and how things could go back into the image. And this one here worked out great for both or all those things because the um, foreground was really strong and 
the atmosphere and the image really did help kind of take you back into the um, space. This one here, the one odd thing about it was, you know, I mentioned before that we, I didn't want to have um, objects, man-made objects in there that you really would define um, that distortion that you get with this image or these images. And so there was a crane right up here and I just digitally removed that. Um, but this image in particular was such that whenever I, I saw how wonderful this area here looked, I just thought there's lots of potential for this to come together as a big body of work maybe someday. And so this was, I, I guess, my number one inspiration to kind of continue on with it. This is the first time I've seen these big. Prior to this, I had only seen them on eight and a half by 11. Mm -hmm. And then it's even smaller because of um, the format. But uh, <clears throat> I'm excited about this work because it, it looks a lot different than all the other images. And these images now are being done, done with a, uh, a drone camera. And so I'm up above, sometimes directly looking down, mm -hmm. most often just slightly at an angle. And for me, instead of taking all the information of a horizontal image and stretching it or compacting it, I'm stretching it out. And for me, it looks a little bit more lunar mm -hmm. than, than um, these others. And it's a, a lot of fun to see those right next to the vertical so Well, it's changed it completely. Um, in both positive ways and negative ways. Positive, um, it, you, you think about simple things like being able to buy or, or having to buy a roll of film. Whenever I was a student, um, you thought about every penny. Um, you, you, now you shoot, you put images on a card and you can reuse that card. And so um, there's definite benefits there drawbacks is you can shoot too much um, and other drawback for me actually in terms of teaching one of the biggest drawbacks of digital is the loss of um, camaraderie in the darkroom uh, I think students learn every bit as much from each other as they do from their faculty members um, their teachers uh, and with losing a lot of dark rooms, I'm lucky enough to still have dark room uh, facilities. And here at um, Pensacola State College, you guys are really lucky that they've kept that going also. Um, but whenever you lose that, and I, I saw this in graphic design years before photography went digital, um, they used to hang out together and really feed off of each other. And I always feared that as photography went digital, that would happen. And sure enough, it's, it's definitely happening. And COVID, unfortunately, is taking that gap even farther. But uh, yeah, there are definite benefits to it. Um, ease can go a long way to, for creativity. Sometimes ease can make it a little more difficult for creativity too, though. So. It's just another tool. That's the way I look at it. Um, uh, every, uh, throughout the history of photography, we've gone through different uh, tools, and this is a different tool. It's a big difference, but it is still just a tool, and it's all about what you see more so than, than what it is you're using to get those um, images across. Currently, I'm working on a project photographing places, and that's what I'm actually doing right now on my sabbatical. Um, photographing places where nature writers have lived and been inspired to write. Mm -hmm. So I have um, been fortunate enough to, uh, I've got about 14 or so writers so far um, of national stature who have let me enter their lives. Some of them are 
contemporary writers. Others are um, deceased who have quite often um, trusts set up in their names, uh, foundations, and um, those foundations have let me on these different places, these different properties um, to photograph and make the connections between the writers um, and place. For, for me, it's every writer that I'm focusing on has specifically stated that place is really important to their work. And so um, it's, it's a really fun thing to be able to make those visual connections for people who read their books all the time and really don't know visually um, those connections. And so to be able to facilitate that, I'm really excited to, to, to do that and make, make that available to the general public. Um, right now, you can't find any of those images. I'm, I'm kind of holding off until I get a little bigger body of work um, to promote it. Um, but I think in the next year or so, I should be at a point to where uh, it'll be, I'll be putting it out there some. For me, that's easy. Don't be afraid to fail. You know, I, I the, the longer I taught, the more students have, I think, become afraid to fail. And mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. Um, but it's important. You, I think you learn a lot from failure. I don't look at failure as a negative thing. I look at it as a learning experience. And the more you try different things, the better you're going to be at what you do. So yeah, don't be afraid to fail.